Okay, so he's playing on Sunday. How do you think the Niners will use Bosa, should use Bosa? Let's be realistic here. I mean, if I'm the 49ers, I'm I'm easing him in. I don't I would definitely put a snap count on him and I would start out with third downs only and see where he's at maybe third quarter. And if you have a snap count of let's say 35 snaps, then you can ramp him up through the rest of the game. So if you're on pace to maybe only hit 17 on third downs, now like middle of third quarter, I can start playing him on second down as well, first down and start mixing him in to get him up towards whatever that snap count is. I I wouldn't run him, you know, what are we going to have? 60 offensive plays or defensive plays? I mean, if I can get him around half, I'm good with that. That's what I would do with him. So week one last year against the Bears, he played 45 snaps. Week one. Okay. 78%. He should not play 45 snaps in this game. No. 30. 30, 30 tops. Yeah. He played 36 week two last year against Seattle in like a big blowout win. If the Niners are up big, he doesn't need to play. He should play in the first half, but I don't know that they're ever going to be up big against the Steelers. We'll see. But yeah, I think um, 30 tops, maybe more like 25, maybe more like 20. That's why I would start with third downs for the first half of the game and see how the game's going. If if you're going to win the game handily, which I don't necessarily see that, but let's say they're they're on the way to a blowout, then you can... Continue on third downs and kind of taper them down as the game goes. But assuming it's going to be a close game, which I would expect, I would rather have him ramping up in the second half. So only third downs in the first half. Then in the second half, I can start mixing in second and first down to get towards that 30 snaps in the game. That's where I would feel comfortable because if the game's on the line, final drive, I want him in there every snap if I can make it happen. Well, that'll be interesting too. I feel I feel like from the Steelers' perspective, if the Niners are like pacing Bosa, giving him a third down here, a third down there, so they can play him the entire fourth quarter if they need to, what you could do is wait till he's on the field for third down. If you convert, go hurry up. Or not hurry up, but just no huddle. Good no point. huddle, get to the line, keep him out there. You can slow down or go fast. Like wear him out, test his endurance. I know he's in the greatest shape ever, right? But he's not in football shape. He hasn't done things like this. And they always say, like, the most difficult drive for linemen is the first one. So, like, make him play. Keep him out there. I wonder if the Steelers do something like that. I don't know if they're that sophisticated offensively to actually think like that. But they – I would because I'm so it smart. Does. I'm, a, I'm an <laughs> offensive genius. Did you know that? Did you know that? It's true. I was it's like, really what I rank offensive geniuses. I would say Andy Reid – Grant Cohn, Kyle Shanahan is probably the order that I would put it in. But I would have to say so. Well, I would. I, I have a lot of respect for Mike McDaniel, but Kyle, he has a lot, a long way to go, a long way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. No, I'm serious though. I feel like that they, the Steelers owe it to themselves to test. I agree. Bosa's endurance, see, test his run defense, test his knowledge of the scheme. Like, of course, he can rush the quarterback, but is he? Does he know his assignments? Like, is he going to be disciplined? It's going to be really interesting to see how they attack him if they have a plan uh I, i'm sure they're expecting him to play or they were yeah oh yeah oh yeah and if you go hurry yeah. up then you can start mixing in the run game and really force the 49ers to use their timeouts or try to you know run them in and out between plays That's quickly a great point keep yeah. them on the field with no huddle and then and run, then at, run him. at him yeah hey man let's play football y you ready for this do you want to do this for four are you ready to do this for four quarters yeah. And will the Niners let you? Or will they get you? Or will they start calling timeouts? Be like, you know what? Let's get him off the field. It's going to be interesting. Or or would it backfire on the Steelers? You just have more Bosa on the field. And yeah. he sacks the quarterback <laughs> and he's hurt. Or he takes the ball. I mean, you could go either way. <laughs> That's Your the risk that you run. Bosa. <laughs> Your strategy is more you run. Bosa. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> I love those little. Because you know they've talked about it. And they have a plan. For sure. For sure. As Maybe they should. Like, you know what? 13 snaps of Bosa. Thank you. Sounds good. We'll just, we won't question our good fortunes here. I'm curious to see what Steve Wilkes, like, how is Steve Wilkes going to use him too? Like, you, have you even met him? Right. Today was the first day, I'm sure. That's the crazy part. Like, Steve Wilkes could have walked over and be like, hi, Nick, let's talk about week one. And Nick could have been like, hi, who are you? <laughs> Do you, the person that, like, had the most relief as soon as they heard he signed was Steve Wilkes. Because you know he's going into week one going, oh, are you kidding me? I don't have Bosa. I'm trying to run this defense, and I don't have the best player. What the hell am I going to do? This is crazy. So he's much better today. Do you think he had two game plans? Like, 
the Bosa uh, game a blitz plan. heavy game plan without Bosa and potentially. Like, yeah, code blue, no Bosa <laughs> game plan. Like, yeah. or was he just like, you know what? This is the front office's problem. I'm just gonna freaking make my game plan, assuming Bosa's here. And if he's not, I'm blaming them and saying I wasn't. You told me. You told me this was gonna be fine. I wonder if he's just like I'm not even reacting to any of this. I'm assuming. Hey, the Bosa Steve. game plan, and then in case of emergency, break glass game plan. Yeah, I I would imagine that a a game plan with Bosa would require more blitzing. So I I think there's minor tweaks, but that's a tweak that he's willing to make, I'm sure. Anyway, good for the 49ers. I wonder like how much the players were worried that this wasn't gonna like were they like looking around like, are we not? Is he not? Are we gonna have to actually? And they're like, okay, no. You thought you I you were nervous. You were scared. No, no, no. I saw you in your face. You were scared. You were scared. You know something? <laughs> would they admit that they were probably pretty nervous that this wasn't gonna get done? God, well, I mean, you think weird. about it today. Today was a great day because it wasn't only Bosa, but it was Kittle returning basically to practice as well. So between those two things, that's that's a big deal. That's a big boost to this team. Yeah, it really feels like the Niners are um, pushing people back. Like, Jake Moody's good. He's good. He's ready. Like, you sure? Even if he was healthy, yeah. is that the guy you want out there? It seems like the Niners are not desperate, but this feels like a playoff game. And it kind of is. Like... They they want to start fast. They don't want to start this o, the season 0 and 1. And they're better than the Steelers. But that doesn't mean they'll win this game. So I feel like they're trying their best to put to put their best foot forward. It means a lot yeah, we, to both teams. Super important. Grant, one of the things that we've talked about most of the offseason is if they want to win a Super Bowl, they kind of have to go get that bye week going into the playoffs. Yeah. And it's interesting because Debo talked about it as well this week and said that he and Shanahan ha had had those conversations about a bye week. So they know that they need to start fast. So going into Pittsburgh without Bosa and Kittle potentially versus now going in there with both, it seems like, that's got to be a, a major boost to what they're looking to accomplish for this Sunday. Absolutely. Pissed off, Brother Bob says, Iglet and Nails, what are we going to do with $30 million in cap? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. They just, they just restructured Kittle and Trent Williams to free up. Like around twenty four million, I think. Probably. I don't know how I feel Bosa. about that. I don't. Yeah. Pay Bosa with that. That's what we don't know with Bosa is how much of that is a signing bonus and upfront and all these other things. That does make me nervous, though. I mean, anytime you are pushing back cap on guys that are that age, I, I'm curious to see how this plays out over the next couple of years, cap wise. I'm upset that people know that people call me Iglet in real life because now. I have friends that will only call me Iglet. I have a friend growing up named Carl. Carl Miller, if you're watching, shout out Carl. He's the most ungoogleable person of all time. Carl Miller. Like, there's 8 million. But anyway, he heard my dad Smith. call me. Yeah, he heard my dad call me Iglet one time. We were eight on the same baseball team. And he was like, the rest <laughs> of our childhood. What's up, Iglet? How you doing, Iglet? <laughs> you're like, come, come on, on, man. Thanks, man. <laughs>